only a vlog and talking about the so-called issue of short wiring. You will often read in many electronics books that you have to make the wiring as short as possible. And even in, say, uh, audio circuits, you have that advice, make the wiring as short as possible, etc, etc. But when we look at the radio amateurs of the 1920s and study their circuits, it could be that that radio or that transmitter had a length, say the whole, the whole circuit board had a length of one meter or so. So was that short wiring and why did it work? Uh, very important to tell is that every wire has a certain inductance and a certain capacitance. Say we have a 10 centimeter wire from the uh, one side to the other side there is capacitance and there is inductance. And that is directly say the problem. 10 centimeter wire uh, that 10 centimeter wire of course does not hang into the air. So we have say uh, a certain impedance at the input of that 10 centimeter wire and we have a certain uh, impedance at the output of the se uh, 10 centimeter wire. But of course I say um, I know that this is kind of stupid because it's the same piece of wire and input and output are more or less the same. Say when that uh, uh, 10 centimeter wire is floating above the ground, the ground electrode, uh, there is a certain natural capacitance from point A to point B and a natural capacitance from the input to the ground and that's all what we call impedance. And impedance is a kind of say um, complicated resistance. It, re it uh, affects say uh, in regards to say pure ohms resistance and uh, AC resistance and that AC resistance is related to the, uh, the capacitance and say the capacitance and the resistance are all related to the, uh, the frequency where it works. So say we have this piece of wire here and I know that it, this is perhaps a very sloppy video but anyway piece of wire here, say it's 10 centimeters, there is a inductance from this part to that part, inductance, that means this, there is a capacitance from this part to that part, and say you have a piece of wire here and here is the ground lead, there is a inductance in the ground lead and there is capacitance here between the signal lead and the ground lead at the input and at the output. Of course this is what I told, kind of too sloppy, but anyway, say we have here internal an electronic circuit. Then of course this is the input impedance here and the output impedance. Often such a circuit is connected to ground. Be it a transistor circuit or be it a tube circuit anyway. Input impedance, output impedance, uh, inductance, capacitance, etc. etc. And when we are looking at say circuits going from 0 Hz up to approximately 500 kilohertz. These say values are not 
very critical anyway. I have to switch off something in my kitchen because it hinders me anyway. Anyway, thanks for, thanks for watching, by the way. Uh, this, is, this is a very sloppy video, but perhaps uh, I can explain say, some basic things. I've made here an oscillator that works uh, between 31 kilohertz and approximately 9 megahertz. The schematic is on my YouTube channel. I will give the link in the text box. And also with such an oscillator we have, say, the same issues. This is the homemade homebrew capacitor tester. Circuit is also on my YouTube channel. I will tell more about it. Uh, this is that test oscillator. And here you can connect a coil and it starts to oscillate and you can read on your oscilloscope and on the counter the output frequency. I have not, not connected here a coil now but anyway when you do that do the switch here and you will surely see uh, a waveform pop up and a frequency pop up anyway. It was all about the short wiring. Well, does that matter? Well, when we are talking about audio circuits, say uh, going from 1 hertz up to approximately 20 kilohertz, uh, my idea is and my experience is that that is not a big problem. Of course, never, never uh, make the wires too long. Say, when you have here an audio amplifier, say on this location, um, say a pre-amplifier, and say uh, 20 centimeters away the end amplifier, it doesn't have to be a problem when the impedances say the input resistances are low. That means that uh, in general when we are talking about uh, transistor circuits no hum can be picked up. So no problems with too long wiring when we are talking about uh, audio circuits. But of course say there's a classic problem when we are talking about audio circuits. Uh, that's the one pointers. And I want to refer to my earlier videos. One pointers in audio. Extremely important extremely important. But uh, uh, there are of course when we are talking about audio other issues too that is uh, signal leads. Uh, must not say be mounted close to leads where current is flowing. Say we have here a lead from the power supply, say it's uh, 30 volts, it supplies the end transistor, um, that means that a, a, a substantial current flows here. Say it's 1 ampere or 2 ampere, and when you mount in such a case a uh, sensitive input wire, a sensitive input wire, 
say here is the input of your audio amplifier and here is your first transistor stage. This goes to the positive and this to the negative. Uh, oh, say to ground. And when such a signal wire is mounted directly very close to um, wires that um, have a certain current flowing when the amplifier is in use, you get electromagnetic coupling. That can give a problem. Anyway, more uh, about this on my YouTube channel. Uh, go to the looking glass on my YouTube channel trailer and uh, use words like audio amplifier, amplifier, shielding, uh, hum, etc. etc. to see more. I realize that this is a very, very sloppy video, but anyway. About short wiring again. Um, No, uh, no special need to, to short wiring when you are working with circuits uh, going from 20 kilohertz up to approximately 12 megacycles. Of course, don't make it too long. Say maximum length is approximately 10 centimeters. A little bit, it will be a problem when you make circuits going from 12 megacycles to 30 megacycles and then really uh, the maximum length is say approximately 5 centimeters for wiring. And everything, every uh, electronic circuit going higher than 30 megacycles use the short wiring advices when you want to make a circuit that works higher on frequencies higher than 30 megacycles. So you can test calls in this frequency range without short wiring. You can make radios in the 100 kilocycles up to 10 mega cycles without too short wiring. Say maximum length is approximately 5 centimeters and above uh, say 30 mega cycles. Yes, that's completely true. So finally, I hope I have a few minutes to show uh, what I wanted to tell originally. Uh, this is the test oscillator and there's here a knob with which you can set to the oscillator to different frequencies. You can uh, connect here a coil, whatever coil, as long as the quality is high enough it will oscillate. And now I am making a extra tuning capacitor at its input. Uh, that makes such a circuit more usable. Now you can connect here a, an unknown coil. It starts to oscillate. You can check that with the scope. And uh, when it doesn't oscillate, there are no longer, there are no more possibilities. But when you study the circuit that I published, it made, made with a field effect transistor. And that means that you can also here use an experimental coil, but parallel to that a tuning capacitor. That makes that the uh, frequency can be set in a much more proper way. I only have a few seconds now. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is what I'm working on. When my camera stops, it will be suddenly, anyway, uh, a tuning, extra tuning capacitor with two uh, switch positions. And with these two switch positions, I can add extra capacitance to the input of the test oscillator. Let me show it here. It's on my tester. I turn now this knob. And you can see a slight change in capacitance. 
but when I do the switch here, there will be perhaps a bigger change in capacitance. So anyway, uh, this is a good thing to uh, make this unit that I published earlier on my YouTube channel uh, better in terms of making it in such a way that you can tune in to all kinds of different frequencies. When a test coil is here at its input. Thanks for watching again.